So I'm sure you've seen this type of problem where they tell you you have to write a function that has indicated function values. In this case, we're going to be going over a problem where we have to do this, and the problem also tells us that it needs to be a linear function. So we know exactly what form we want our function that fits these indicated values to look like. So if this is the kind of problem that you've been stuck on before, you're going to want to stick around to the end of this video because by the end of it, you're going to be feeling a lot better about how to do these types of problems. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So we're going to start with this one here. We're going to write a linear function f such that it has the indicated function values. Then we're going to sketch a graph of the function. So in this case, uh, we are given these two sets of function values. We have uh, f of 3 equals 9 and f of negative 1 equals negative 11. So really what this tells you, this uh, kind of notation here, f of something equals something, that basically tells you that whenever you plug in whatever number is inside the parentheses here into your function f, you will get out whatever number is over here as an output. Really what that means is we have an ordered pair of a point that we know lies on our linear function. We know that it has to go through the point three, nine in order for this to be true. And then similarly over here, we know that if we plug in negative one into our function for X, we're gonna get out negative 11 for Y. So we know that it goes through the point one, negative 11. So essentially what this problem is doing is it's giving us two points that we know our linear function has to have these two points on it. And we have to find the linear function that goes through those two points. So pretty much the, the process for solving this problem is going to be the same as the process for finding a linear function that fits onto two points. So to do this, probably the best approach that you could take is we're going to start with the point slope form of a line. So the point slope form of a line basically says that if we have y minus y1, that will equal m times x minus x1. Another way that you could rewrite this is simply by adding y1 over to both sides of the equation to basically move it over to the right side of your equation. So that's going to give you y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1. So this is the equation of a line that has a slope of m and goes through the point x1 y1. So this is just any point that we know lies on the line. So this can be any point that's on the line. So in this case, we, we know we have two points. So if we're trying to kind of figure out how to fit these two points into the point slope form, we will be able to use either one of these points as the x1, y1 point in our line. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. I'll kind of get into that a bit more in a second. But we also need to find the slope of this line. We need to find the slope of a line that goes through these two points. So how do you find that? Well, kind of similar to, you know, how we can just apply this point slope form of a line. There's pretty much just a formula we're going to be able to use for this. We know that the slope that goes through two points, the slope of a line that goes through two points can just be written as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is basically just another way of saying rise over run. However many units you're going up from one point to the second, from the first point to the second point, divided by how many units you go over to the right from the second point to the first point. So it's just your, your units going in the y direction, which is up and down, divided by your units going in the x direction, which is side to side. So rise over run. So in this case, we have y2, is our second y coordinate, so that's negative 11, minus y1, which is our first y coordinate, which is nine, over x2, which is our second x coordinate, so negative one, minus x1, which is our first x coordinate, which is three. So our slope is gonna be negative 11 minus nine, which is negative 20, over negative one minus three is negative four negative 20 divided by negative 4 would be positive 5. So our slope is going to be 5. So we know that we're going to have a slope of 5. So our m is going to be 5. Then for x1, y1, we just need to pick either one of these two points that we, knows, that we know lies on our linear function that we're trying to create. 
But from here, really, we can pick either of these two points. I'm just going to pick 3, 9. Like I said, it really doesn't matter. This is going to end up simplifying down to the same thing either way. I'm going to go with 3, 9 as x1, y1. So basically, 3 is going to be x1 in this case. And then 9 is going to be y1 in this case. So now we basically just need to plug in this point, 3, 9, into this equation right here. And then we just need to plug in 5 for m into this equation right here. So plugging those in is going to give us y equals m, which is 5, times x minus x1, which is 3, plus y1, which is 9. So now what we have is a linear function, which is in the point slope form. We basically took the slope of the line that we're trying to create, took a point that lies on the line, and plugged all that information into the point-slope formula for the, the equation of a, a linear function. So what you usually want to do once you get a point-slope form version of your linear function is to then basically just simplify it down into the, um, the slope-intercept form. The reason why is because it's kind of just a simpler version of the same line, basically. So to do that, all you really have to do is distribute your slope in through the parentheses here. So 5 times x will be 5x. 5 times negative 3 will be minus 15. And then you're going to keep your plus 9 out here. And that's still going to be equal to y. And then from there, you can basically just combine your like terms. So 5x, there's no other x terms, so we're still just going to have 5x there. And then negative 15 plus 9 is going to leave us with minus 6. So um, y equals 5x minus 6 is going to be the final equation of this linear function that goes through those two points in the slope-intercept form. Now, I'm sure this type of problem makes a lot more sense to you after this video, but we need to take this a step further. In order to make sure that you really understand all the different types of problems you're going to run into dealing with linear functions, you're definitely going to want to go watch that video right there. So just click on that, go check that video out, and let's keep this brain train rolling.